All right. Thanks everyone for jumping in. Uh, we are making some exciting progress. Some amazing things start to pop up. We're also kind of converging to the, the common problems and common themes that we're experiencing, uh, taking steps back in some of the uh, scenarios and just understanding like how to properly position what we're doing for the current scope of the challenge. And obviously there are many different uh, you know, issues and organizational challenges that we're facing. Um, I would like to start today's call with just showcasing the amazing progress uh, that vaccine team uh, has done just for the purpose of encouraging everyone to try and expose the results as soon as, as, soon as possible. And here's, uh, do, do you guys see my screen? Okay, so here's an example of the uh, fancy schmancy title drug mentions looker upper. And basically what you can do, you can uh, check out how specific um, drugs um, uh, are, are being popped up in, in the actual core 19 data set. So you can play around and select um, some of the relevancy and see how it changes the counts. You can select wow. the drugs and you can see the results for those. So this is huge, Ooh. very exciting. And obviously there are many uh, things that we should keep in mind in terms of like exposing this information because it is sensitive to people that you know may stumble up upon it so you know we're already talking to lawyers and we already have somehow the the legal channel in our slack so we're trying to figure things out on the fly but yeah this is amazing like this is huge all right so just that was just a quick second to to showcase amazing progress for everyone's um, awareness the second thing is we've somehow started getting these amazing people that uh, have amazing, exciting ideas. And I think uh, Daniel will be the best person to kind of uh, talk about this, uh, this aspect of our community right now. But I just wanted to showcase that there are um, uh, tasks that uh, start to appear that are actually completely out of scope of the traditional Kaggle uh, challenge, but are well-structured uh, makes sense and there is some live discussion happening. I've actually created Slack channel, a uh, private one for now, for these guys to collaborate. I think we're gonna create Trello board because you know things are accelerating, but we highly encourage anyone that has exciting ideas to participate in this. And maybe you, Daniel, can take a quick minute to describe this. Uh, you're muted, yeah. There we go. Um, yeah I, uh... I'm just beginning to familiarize with some of the amazing ideas that are there. So, so someone else who who may be involved with that may be able to do a better job of giving the overview of it. But essentially, you know, a group that is looking at um, at the the treatment side of thing and uh, and whether we can can pull together some useful information there. Um, also, just to quickly mention, so for that that. Um, that board or we're trying to talk about some of these things. We've sent a link now, so anybody is going to be able to uh, to, to hop onto there really quickly. Uh, so we, we've reduced that bottleneck. But uh, but Arthur, you might actually be in a better position tonight to talk about that that specific initiative, which is really exciting. Yeah, I mean it's all about exciting ideas, maybe even big ideas and large ideas with a giant impact. Like there is this team that is working on the browser extension that is able to showcase the the claims and just showcase which claims are wrong which I think is huge and definitely needed um, to battle this information. So yeah, I mean, there are so many exciting ideas and we have so many people that are willing to help and are joining us every single day. So yes, we're, we're highly encouraging that. Meanwhile, we're trying to stay on track and actually you know, make progress within individual tasks that we have and to fit the Kaggle submission and initial questions that were formulated in, in that challenge, which is a very important uh, aspect of it because you know, we are getting some amazing results and we're kind of running towards the, the general um, you know, large impact items, but we have to take a step back, understand what are the questions, properly understand what is the outputs that we're gonna produce within the next two weeks and just you know, pay, uh, pay a little bit more attention to the structure. Again, not to uh, get too crazy about it, but just to keep it uh, on top of your mind, uh, I'm going to have a call with the risks uh, team after this call for us to 
um, you know, take a step back and just uh, try to discuss some of these things. So let's proceed to the team reporting. Um, I'll quickly remind the structure for the reporting. High level progress, quick summary on top three tasks that are being worked on. Time to results. What are the results and how soon can you show existing progress externally? Blockers, what do you need help with? So we'll start with uh, Maya, task risk factors. Hi, how are you? Um, uh, today, um, I've taken my time and uh, made a very full list of uh, risk factors. And beside that, I made a very full uh, list of the risk uh, factors. I've uh, searched uh, for each one individually in this uh, Thresher tool, so that now I approximately know uh, what is the percentage of papers contains relatively relevant articles. Uh, thank you very much for bringing uh, Yason uh, to my team. He's absolutely amazing. We are working on uh, developing a Trello structure at the moment. And uh, we are, uh, Greedy in my team is testing uh, uh, Mark's tool at the moment and says that the code makes a perfect sense to him. Hopefully it works. And if this is the case, we can uh, finally start uh, pushing the tasks themselves and finally come up, and I really hope that it will uh, happen on Sunday, uh, we will finally come up with the first meaningful results. Uh, we've defined the output we want to get. Uh, we want uh, to uh, focus on the full uh, text papers first because that makes the most of meaning and then based on similarities, we can sort the metadata accordingly. So it seems like we have a structure and it seems like we are capable of doing th things uh, strofe strofefully, strofefully? thankfully, <laughs> and, 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 and finally get some uh, high quality results. Amazing, sounds like the best progress and you know, the best dynamic change from, from the previous day. Sounds great. Uh, task number two, Gio, Daniel. Yes, hi, can you hear me? Um, okay, um, right, so, as uh, progress, we have now on the GitHub uh, the codes to source uh, US demographic data uh, and uh, an alternative source for granular um, number of cases for the US with respect to the global one that we had provided. We have an additional source which is from New York Times. Um, then uh, which one to use, which one is uh, more reliable, that's uh, something to be decided by the user, I would say. And uh, we are progressing on uh, on the other topics as well, providing granular data for uh, uh, Spain and Italy, demographic data for Spain and Italy, and providing um, humidity data from around the world. So hopefully uh, we'll be able to upload some more data sets um, in the next few days and I'll keep you updated. Sounds amazing. And uh, what do you think is the, like the result that you're going to share externally in the ne next couple of days? Like, do you think well, creating those, some visualization or tool? Yes, this is an active discussion with, for example, the visualization team. So this is all data that then uh, feeds downstream to visualization and to risk. Sounds great. Any blockers? For now, we're fine. Great. All right, next team, uh, transmission task, Christine. Hi. Um, yeah, we are still working on multiple fronts at the, at the moment. Um, so I think we'll be able to upload our some of our results in the search engine together this weekend. Um, and, and meanwhile, we are still you know, exploring ways to improve the search and we did a little more work on uh in terms of like starting the data annotation work uh we have a, another meeting this afternoon um and then also some look, also looking into uh 
you know, using existing tools or uh, models to extract information. That's what we're working on. And hopefully we'll have some something um, to share this weekend, yeah. Sounds great. Any blockers? Anything you need help with? Um, no, so far so good, yeah. Sounds great. Uh, the next task, vaccines, then Salsa. Hey everybody, <clears throat> um, thanks for sharing the, the hard work that, that Ben and the visualization team did, Arthur. So yeah, Ben talked to them. He said, here's our data so far. And then they whipped up something that looks really nice, interactive. And so that's a great place for us to start. And we need to keep iterating because there are a lot of false positives in there. So we need to make, uh, we need to have better models for extracting those drug treatments. And then we need to keep adding on new features. So we want to add um, evidence annotations for the types of papers that these uh, drugs are mentioned in. So that's the work that I'm doing with Christine and getting annotators with Iman's team um, to like generate training data so we can automatically classify papers like that. And that would be a feature in that, that kind of dashboard. Um, another exciting thing that happened yesterday, I was talking with Jeremy and Jeremy has a lot of connections with people who have data that would be really useful for training relation extraction models, which we're thinking about, especially for like the round two submission, as we're thinking of like a mechanistic kind of knowledge graph that we want to create. So he's he's making those connections happen, and we're going to keep talking about um, how to use that data, etc. So those are the main things. No blockers right now. Amazing. Sounds great. And I think today we, we have Brendan on a call, which uh, could give us some more insight into kind of the, the general task of, uh, you know, NLP foundation data sets and just a quick summary of the work that uh, he is doing, which is amazing work that is happening in the background. And he, he needs help to, to have someone to communicate that to and basically make it uh, possible for us to understand what the work he's doing. But if you, Brandon, can give us a quick summary, that would be great. Uh, I'll give you the quickest summary possible. Um, I've gotten the processing time down for the entire data set to less than two days. So by the time Yay. the data drops today, uh, thanks to uh, a couple of people that really helped with coding, like Imran uh, and Guillermo and a couple other people, thank you so much. Um, uh, yeah, so the code has been optimized. Everything is in one notebook. It's super easy to run. And uh, after the data drops, we'll have it in, in two days, roughly. So, Amazing. Sounds great. So the next point on the agenda, discuss medical expert integration into specific tasks. And I'm, I'm seeing those medical experts actually uh, willing and organically jumping into the tasks and providing feedback. I saw, I saw that happening for... Uh, uh, vaccines task and Hillary jumping in and just informing uh, people, hey, you know, formaldehyde is not a drug; it's it's just a chemical substance and stuff like that. So let's let's try to figure out a process to encourage this kind of you know organic uh, streamlining. Maybe there is no magical structure or process to kind of get all of them together and have calls with them. I don't know. Maybe Steve or Natalie. Ha have different ideas. If you could give us a quick summary, that would be great. Uh, well, I think you're right that it is happening within the tasks organically. Uh, as you say, that, uh, you know, I, I think at this point we're, we're sort of very task focused. So uh, we are uh, getting that input uh, in that way. And we haven't established a, a horizontal standard process by which we can get a, uh, that feedback um, in, a, in a structured way for each one of the tasks and in a common way for each one of the tasks. So uh, I think at this point, we're still trying to see how that input happens at the task level and then uh, observe the best practices and figure out if there is a standard approach that should be adopted, but we're not there yet. And do you think that it's possible for us to get a couple of these people and make quick interviews with them on like what's happening right now, what they're seeing? Because we, we, we are kind of ready in terms of we have the blog section on the website and if we can take them for 10 minutes and basically uh, present something that other people would see and be like, oh wow, they have medical experts and here's why it makes sense. 
and hold this thing is not just you know random collective of people but something that is working somehow who knows how but you know yeah do you think you can take that task on uh i think that uh or someone from communication out. team can help you do that yeah, yeah. Uh, sounds great yeah. let us let us know how we can help on that one other quick thing that we might want to think about is whether we start to do just even one as a test, uh, do a domain expert call, get the people who have relevant expertise to each other, 15 minutes, even five minutes of them talking with one another will help them start cross-pollinating some ideas and they might be, then be able to give us some, some more useful feedback in terms of how we can, can course correct or improve how we're doing. Sounds great. Okay. And we'll, we'll, talk, we'll look into it, take it offline. Yeah. Uh, we forgot to mention about a very exciting thing that is happening with Brandon besides all the NLP stuff. Uh, Daniel? Well, actually, Brandon, with you here, I'd love it if you could, you could just kind of explain the, the sort of the, the arc of, uh, of what, you, what you did this morning. Uh, yeah, so I work at Deloitte. Um, I work in NLP, and uh, they invited me to one of our quarterly calls, which uh, is for all artificial intelligence and machine learning practitioners in Central Europe. So I got to present about Corona Y to them and like uh, all the stuff that we're doing with unstructured data and making search engines and uh, everything else. Um, and I got a lot of positive feedback about it because usually these calls are pretty boring. People are like not really good at <laughs> presenting their projects, uh, but everybody started messaging me afterwards and they wanted the slides. Um, and we forwarded it to, uh, to the office in um, the Netherlands, and there's some people that are interested in joining, so uh, I'm talking to them and seeing how to, uh, how to convince them to put some hours into Corona Y. So, all good. Wow. Just, yeah, just a brilliant initiative on your part in terms of just kind of taking that on. And one of the things that was great was, you know, kind of Brendan mentioned it to us, a couple of the people from communications were able to jump in. Kim did an amazing job of working with him to sort of polish up some graphics and get some things together. And it made anyone it beautiful. Else, <laughs> yeah, well, we'll have to share the whole deck to, uh, in, in general so people can, can admire it because it's amazing. Um, and, and the same thing goes for anybody. If, if any of you have an idea of wanting to present, um, whether it's a professional association or anywhere that you'd want to present, let us know and we'll do everything we can to support you in presenting in your communities about what it is that we're doing. Yeah, absolutely. And I see it happening organically, like that uh, guy Isaac did it with the weights and biases YouTube uh, uh, video. And he presented like what we're actually doing and how we're helping and people were curious. And I think we got an influx of engineers coming from that specific initiative too. So that's, that's just amazing. And all this, you know, self-organization, self, um, you know, initiative, it's, it's amazing how it's all coming together and produces amazing results. Okay, so I think we have a couple more minutes to discuss general organizational challenges and resource needs. Uh, maybe you, Daniel, Steve, uh, if Mark is here on the call, Tina, Shannon, um, uh, this is your time to speak up. Okay, so uh, the, the couple things just from the, the kind of the, the communication side that come to mind. Um, we should now have it so that anybody can join those user groups that are there. Um, if you can, can join one, again, if you don't have a team that you're assigned to, just join the, the unassigned one, and that's going to help us figure out how to get people onboarded and get our communication going a little bit better. Um, if we can make sure that each of the teams maybe have your, your PM for your team work on the Trello board to make sure that it's easy for people to see what's going on there, you know, who, who's assigned to, to as the main person on a task and the description of it. And then the other piece is just, I think, and this is, this is for me not being as involved in this piece, um, but the easier we make it for the medical domain experts who are coming in to understand what it is that we're doing uh, on the data analysis and machine language side, uh, the more productive the feedback that they're going to be able to, to give is. And I think also things like that, that task VT um, board that we now have, um, turning those medical experts loose on that and really encouraging them to help us understand how the machine task relates to what, what a domain expert would actually need uh, will, will be uh, key as well. Sounds great. All right. Well, and from I, a program management aspect, um, you think it's a little um, premature for program management activities or more um, for longer term, um, longer term visions and uh, uh, more um, more mature organization. Um, we've done what we can and help in terms of organizing people, directing people and getting the teams up and started and everybody's off to a really good start and we're starting to see some good results. 
Um, I guess I would just um, mention we've we've seen some conversations around this, and I've I've seen it um, in personal experience here as well. We just want to make sure that our results can be independently verified. Um, either that's peer review within our own team or and or um, tested, you know, uh, by others within the organization. Um, please remember to um, cite and uh, uh, cite as as needed um, all of the sources and the code. Um, I personally um, did a little bit of coding yesterday and found that I don't have access to contribute on Git. Uh, so people may be running into that as well. I had to pass code in a Google Drive. Um, so from that perspective, I just I think that um, teams are doing really well. Um, program management in general um, is less effective due to um, not knowing how many people um, were trying to serve at any one time. It's sort of like building an application for 10 people, then all of a sudden you've got 500 people, um, <laughs> right? So it's just a little difficult there in, in terms of effectiveness. Um, so we may um, see less of a focus on program management going forward, but certainly the experience um, has been good. I think it's been helpful to get the group started and um, we'll, we will certainly be around. Sounds great. And yes, it's, it's absolutely challenging. Managing 600 people is just insane. And like, thank you for doing the great job and keep, keeping yourself sane in this environment. Uh, things are changing every day and we're kind of adapting with the flow. So as new things appear, we, we have to invent new things. And unfortunately, we, we're facing situations when the existing infrastructures and programs and you know services are just not well suited to support our needs and obviously we can't just rebuild uh, calendars or rebuild you know tools but you know we we have to find workarounds or find various ways to go around that like that trello issue and inability to invite people i've spoke to michael smart caveman to potentially using api and have a simple request uh, page hey, I want to be added to these Trello boards. Here's my email. And boom, it, it happens automatically. So we're, we're exploring. Um, a little um, kind of uh, remark, if I may. Uh, I, I think that, uh, sorry, it's, it's a little bit unrelated to previous conversation, uh, but uh, I think it's important probably to mention that I think at this point we kind of need a better formula, uh, formulated HR people to be, ca uh, to be capable of helping us with a recruitment uh, kind of recruitment process. Uh, and if we can like have it more defined, well-structured and working, that would be such an amazing support. 100%. And we're, we're actually internally discussing a potential of building an internal tool that is able to match make people to specific things. We're not there yet, but Frankie's um, communication team is doing a manual job of kind of tagging people and tagging tasks to better understand how to match, you know, NLP people to NLP tasks and various places. So yes, like it, maybe it's time to create the HR channel and basically create- That would be so helpful. Sounds great. All and right. Maya, so, maybe you could also help us ahead. understand what the lowest hang- Oh, sorry, go ahead, Art. No, no, go ahead. I was going to say, maybe you can help us understand what the lowest hanging fruit are of the things that are easiest for us to do that would be helping with that. And we'll sort of, it'll probably be a mixture of trying to like organically address the pieces that are easiest to do and then look at that and come up with something that's, that's then a more coherent full plan. Yeah, let's create a chart channel and then... Uh, throw yeah, let's, let's talk about it, like discuss it. I'll suggest uh, what I, like uh, the way I see it and uh, you will do... Uh, the way you see it. <laughs> All right. Sounds great. Perfect. Uh, we have uh, two more minutes for uh, people that want to ask questions or newcomers or people that are confused. Uh, just, you know, the, the ones that are not part of the admin team. This is your time to speak up. Uh, let us know. Hey, uh, this is Akash here. Um, 
I just had a question. Is there a list of, uh, there's a Trello board where we have all the NLP tasks pending? Do we have that then? There, there was a, supposed to be one single board where all teams were going to place their uh, list of items that they needed to be computed. I think so. Uh, Daniel, Brendan, is there the NLP stack Trello board? Yes. As far as I know, there isn't a Trello board for the NLP stack. There's just the channel, and then we're delegating responsibilities okay. based on which group they, the people want to go into. Oh. Um, but it might be it might be worth linking. Yeah, Can I link things between boards? Yeah, that's what yeah. Daniel introduced. Oh, okay. we do we we do now have a, a data sets Trello board, um, but I don't think that we've necessarily started to plug stuff into there yet. So Brandon, you can you can let us know what the easiest way for us to kind of help get anything in there in, so that people can have a bird's eye view of how they jump in. To help. Yeah, let's okay. create a, a board yeah, for for Brandon, and then he'll he'll figure it out. Sounds good. Yeah. All right, thanks, Akash. A common board, yeah. The common board will can have all the tasks. Yep, sounds good. Anyone else? Uh, hi, this is Muhammad. I uh, yeah, so I was actually going through the Trello board and can find few of the NLP tasks that's present in task VT. Uh, but I guess what Brendan was talking about was of more generic NLP task that is there. I, I am not, I'm, I was not able to find any NLP channels on Slack. So I'm not sure if that exists or how I can be, because my primary expertise is from the NLP and computer vision side. So I was trying to hope to contribute in that area. And uh, go ahead and send me a message and I'll be able yeah. to add you to the channel. Sure. Yeah, I that. think we've, we've created it as a private channel to, you know, kind of uh, not confuse people a lot that are, yeah. are less technical. So let's, yeah, let's uh, keep Brandon as the responsible for adding. Yeah, sure. Thank you. Actually, Thank I joined you. this group last night, so I was just trying to explore as much as I can and get up to speed. Sounds great. Awesome. Anyone else? Thank you. All right. Uh, sounds great. Thank you so much for jumping in on the call today. We've got a lot of stuff going on, uh, trying to figure out how to, to do it better every single day. So yeah, just stay healthy, stay energized enough to support this, uh, this whole craziness. Oh, actually there was one, one thing. Uh, I, I just got word back from Causally and anybody with a uh, coronay.org email address can join. Uh, so I don't know if it's possible or easy for people who are interested to quickly obtain a, a coronay.org email address. Yeah. So right now I created G Suite and I'm temporarily paying for it. So we're kind of limiting the, the number of emails. I think I requested the one for team at Corona Y. I think we can just share one for, for right now. That's I think that's enough. reasonable. Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Thanks, yeah. Jeremy. That's actually huge because the tool is amazing. Uh, we just need to figure out how to use it. All right. Sounds good, guys. Thank you so much for jumping in. I'm going to be uploading recording shortly. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.